Edith, um, you're gonna, you've been invited to a special service on today. And we want you all to have a program so you'll understand what it's all about. We, we 
He worked hard like his father Joseph. And y'all know what they said. And some people said Joseph wasn't even dead, but I ain't gonna say it. But Joseph loved him. He loved him, and Jesus loved Joseph. And, and he, when he left home, we didn't hear from him for a while. And when he did come back, he was not welcomed as he deserved. <laughs> he came back, and he looked really, really different. And he had like 12 partners, 12 people with him. And, 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 and according to Mark 6, Jesus returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath, he began teaching in the synagogues, and many who heard him were amazed, and they asked, where did you get all this wisdom, all this power to perform these miracles? And they scoffed, and this is what home people do. They said, he's just a carpenter, the son of Mary, brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and his sisters live right here among us. They were deeply offended at his own people. His own people, not me, but his own people refused to believe him. And then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except for his own hometown. Among his relatives and his own family. And because of their own beliefs, he really couldn't do anything but a few miracles. Uh, they laid a few hands and killed a few sick people and, you know, they got better. He was, he was amazed at his unbelief. I just hope God bless this family. I love you. And I just don't know what we're going to do without you. Thank you. Then we have as a relative, Jude, the brother of Jesus. Thank you, Pastor. Many of you know of my brother, but many of you may not know me. You see, my name is Jude, and I am the brother of Jesus, and along with our three other brothers and sisters. You know, growing up um, with brothers and sisters, you know, they're just your brother and sister. But we knew there was something different about our brother Jesus. Yes, he was the oldest. But more than that, he was just the kindest and most respectful brother that anyone could ever ask for. I'm not just saying that now because, you know, I always believed in Jesus, so much so that I became my brother's father. People from home, our very home, may have rejected him, but those of us that grew up in the house with him knew that he was special. He really honored our mom and our dad. And there is no words I can say to comfort you except hold on to the hope and believe what he said. That he would rise again. The Holy Spirit led me to write these words that are now part of the Bible in Jude chapter 1. And I want to leave them with you. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. As a church member and elder in the temple, will you come? Yeah. 
feast was ended, as they were returning, the boy Jesus stayed behind. His parents did not know it, but supposing him to be in the group that went a day ahead. But then they began to search for him among their relatives and acquaintances. And when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem, searching for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. Yes. And when his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said unto him, Son, why have you treated us this way? And he said unto them, Why were you looking for me? Did not you know I must be about my, in my father's house? And they did not understand these things that he spoke to his mother. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was submissive to them. And his mother treasured up these words in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor of God and with man. God bless you. As a friend, we appreciate the family holding it down for two minutes as a friend, Mary. 
faithful to Jesus until the end. I often thought we must be brothers from another mother, but no, it was the same mother. I was a disciple of Jesus, and some of the other disciples were, were jealous of our relationship because Jesus would often pull me aside to go with him on special occasions, special and private occasions, like the one time he took Peter, my brother James, and I and me to the mountain where he was transfigured. And all of, sudden, all of a sudden he was standing there talking to Moses and Elijah. Peter got scared and said, should we be here? But according to John 19, when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts. One part for each soldier, also his tunic, but the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it. But, it was, but they cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which said, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clovis, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, Standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then he said to the disciple, Me, behold your mother. And from that hour, I took her to my own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said, To fulfill the scripture, I thirst. He gave up the ghost, but not before taking care of his mother. Jesus, I'll see you again. I love you. Amen. Amen. Of course, we all over here to read your obituary silently. We're going to stand for the reading of the word. I have an awesome privilege of preaching this eulogy, but most of all, this message. Amen. You can turn your Bible to Mark 16. One through eight. Mark 16. And it reads thusly. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll the stone away for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he's going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And for a message, the title would be The Life and Legacy of Jesus Christ. And I can't, I can't think of anything else because God is still with us. Amen? Amen. Eulogy simply means to speak well of a person. Amen. But I'm going to preach the gospel truth about Jesus Christ and the whole experience of knowing him and him saving me. He's the best thing. Knowing Jesus is the best thing that has ever happened to me. How about you? Amen. I, I can make it personal. If it had not been for Jesus, Saving my soul. I don't know where I would be. Yeah. You were invited here today by the Holy Spirit to celebrate with me the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I won't be before you long because everyone has spoken so well about Jesus. And everything that they said is true. From his birth 
to his present moment. They all agreed that it was just something different and special about Jesus. Most people wait until you die to say something nice, but we serve a living God. So every time we open our mouth, we can say something good about Jesus. Because even though he died over 2,000 years ago, he got up. Amen. Most people wait. Uh, well, I just want to capitalize on the statement that Jesus spoke and draw your message, draw the message from this text. Those of you sitting here will get it because we understand the grace of God. How many of you understand the grace of God? How do we understand it? Because at some point in our lives, we were lost. How many of you were born sin? At some point, maybe in the church, maybe a follower, but some things we've done in our lives can, uh, we have to figure out how we need to get back to Jesus. I know a lot of us are dressed up on Easter Sunday, but still, we all have some sin in our lives. You see, there's a difference between joining a church and someone giving their full heart to Jesus. I, I don't want to pick on Peter today, but if you notice, his name was not on the program. He was barely mentioned, but Peter would have done anything for Jesus. He would have fought for him. In fact, he did. Peter was hard in the world, and when he came to know Jesus, he was hard in the church. He became a follower. But how many of you know that even if you're a follower, you still sometimes don't give your full heart to Jesus? There are a lot of folks that come to church dressed up, look pretty, but still have not surrendered their full heart to Jesus. And we sit on the front row, we carry the communion cloth, we serve, we sing in the choir, we usher, but still, sometimes we haven't given our hearts to Jesus. But here's where grace comes in. And free will. God gives you opportunity after opportunity to love him with your whole heart. And to submit every part of your life to him. Say every part. Every part. So we're not picking on Brother Peter. Nor are we talking behind his back because Jesus showed Peter mercy. You heard all the testimonies about what Jesus did. How he was, but there was a side of Jesus that no other religious leader had. And that was one of compassion and love. He even had love and compassion for those that hated him and betrayed him. And here we have Peter, one of the 12 disciples, one of Jesus' inner circles, one that Jesus trusted, but he knew. Peter had a lot of lip service. And one day he even told Jesus, I'll die for you. Yes. But Jesus knew Peter, and he knew that maybe the heart was willing, but the flesh is weak. You ever been around people good intentions? Yeah. The heart is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yeah. Remember it was Peter that spoke words from heaven when Jesus asked the twelve, who do men say that I am? Right. They all gave answers. Yeah. Some said that you are a prophet. Some said Moses. Then Jesus asked them a question. But who do you say that I am? And Jesus is asking you that question this morning. And Peter spoke and said, you are the Christ. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father which is in heaven. And he said, and I tell you this, Peter, that on this rock, 
earth. But Jesus told him, I'm holding back the devil on your behalf because I have confidence in you. You see, there are some people that God has handpicked to be leaders and to do things for him. And so he holds back the devil. He said, I'm not going to let him sift you because when you become converted, I want you to go back and strengthen your brothers. God knew he could handle going through this down season in his life. And that when he came up out of it, he was going to come out swinging. Because I don't know about you, I, I love people that have been converted out of the world. Because when people have been converted out of the world, the things we take for granted that's been out in the church all of our lives, and we act like the church been in us all of our lives. Peter that was bold, all of a 
pray and proclaim Jesus. When we're at school, you start to fit in with the cursing and the talking, right. acting like you're not a church boy or a church girl, denying Jesus. Your living arrangements, you're acting like you don't know Jesus. Your sleeping arrangements, acting like you don't know Jesus. The way you conduct business, acting just like you don't know Jesus. We deny him. You know, a lot of people, we hear the reports. People are different sometimes on a Monday than they are on a Sunday. That's denying Jesus. Uh, we deny him maybe not in the same way Peter did. But denial is denial. And when Peter heard the cock crow, he remembered his word. He was too ashamed and afraid to go to the crucifixion. Even though he had been on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus, he was too ashamed and too afraid to stand at the foot of the cross. Even though he had sat at Jesus' feet and Jesus had washed his feet, he was too afraid and too ashamed to go with Joseph to ask for the body of Jesus. So that it can be buried properly and given honor, even though it was against the law to give an outlaw a proper burial. Amen. He was too afraid and too ashamed to come to this service today. <clears throat> Some Peters won't even come in the house of God. And then, which by Jewish law, when a person died, you had to bury them the same day. But because it was leading up to the Sabbath, they had to wait until Sunday to bury him. But Jesus, who was filled with love and mercy, filled with grace, still remembered Peter. After all, he died for all the Peters. Because even though the obituary ends with his death, you don't mind if I give you the rest of the story. Amen. Well, after they crucified Jesus, hung him on the cross, they couldn't give him the proper burial Again, because it was close to the Sabbath and it was against the law. So this man who was a part of the council but did not agree with the council was seeking the Messiah. A man who was very rich but recognized the richness of the gospel went to Herod and asked him for the body of Jesus. He had already carved out a tomb that had never been used. He, this man Joseph, went and took Jesus' body down from the cross. Because by law, they wanted the body to stay on the cross and decompose to bring shame to the dead. But Joseph took my Jesus' body down from the cross and wrapped him in linen cloth and carried him to the grave. Not his disciples, not Joseph's servants, but Joseph himself. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and two other Marys watched and followed him to see where they were going to lay him so that they could come back after the Sabbath and anoint his body because it was the duty of the family to prepare the body for burial. Some still eat men, evil men said that we, we want to make sure that it's not a trick. So we want to make sure we have a guard and a big stone in front of the tomb. Because he said, we remember him saying that in three days he was going to get up again. We want to make sure that his disciples won't steal his body and take him away. And when Mary, the mother of Jesus, came back to see about her son and all the Mary, the stone had been rolled back. And the tomb was empty. And there was a man sitting there watching them. And he said, why are you looking for Jesus? And he said something that lives in me, that stays in me. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? He has risen just like he said. He said, look in the tomb where he used to live. Death come hold him down. You are the risen king. The seal of majesty, you're the risen king. So, some of your friends are still looking for you to be in dead situations.
and he still didn't forget about Peter. Right. At this most powerful moment, yes. he didn't say, hello, mother. No. That wasn't his mother anymore. Yes. He looked at them and said, but go tell his disciples.
that one day you will give your full hand to the Lord. So the doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. If you're not saved, when the stones roll back, that's when the doors open. The veil is rent. Thank God we don't have to go to a priest anymore. We have direct access to God. So if you're not saved on this day, what a great day. And all stand. want to give your heart to the Lord. What a great day to give your heart to the Lord.